Black Friday crowds got a little rough. More than 164 million consumers will shop on Black Friday. Images like these, people losing their minds over items of clothing, is just the tip of a giant iceberg called fast fashion. On Black Friday in 2011, Patagonia ran this full-page ad in the New York Times. The Don't Buy This Jacket campaign was a bold move that addressed the issue of consumerism head-on. Yet Patagonia is a business that designs and sells products to consumers. So why on earth would they make this statement? Put simply, the ad was all about communicating their position on the climate crisis. In 2019, a UN report found that the fashion industry is responsible for 8 to 10% of global carbon emissions. To give that some context, that is more than all international flights and maritime shipping combined. Many businesses in the fashion industry are aware of the devastating effects they are having on the environment. Some, like Patagonia, have attempted to convey messages of change. But sadly, that is not the case for the majority of fashion brands. One of the major culprits when it comes to the environmental impact is what is often known as fast fashion. It's a term coined for retailers mass-producing garments at a very low cost. And while events like Black Friday show there's a huge consumer appetite for clothing like this, a fundamental change is needed. Because if the industry doesn't take steps to mitigate its global impact, fast fashion will keep speeding us towards environmental disaster. Fast fashion is a multi-trillion dollar industry, with these 10 countries dominating the market for retail purchases. Oxford Street in London is Europe's busiest shopping street, with around half a million daily visitors pre-pandemic. I'm here during the pandemic, and even now there is plenty of shoppers. Retailers save billions of dollars by locating their factories in emerging countries like India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Cambodia, and many others. But there's a different, higher cost to having a large fashion industry in these countries, which includes the impact on the environment and violation of in workers' Bangladesh, rights. An eight-story building has collapsed. Human rights violations within fast fashion are systematic and an important issue that need to be addressed. However, in this video, we are going to be focusing primarily on the environmental impacts of the industry. So let's look at Bangladesh. After India, it's the world's second largest producer of fast fashion and is exceptionally vulnerable to climate change. It's one of the world's worst polluted countries and faces regular flooding thanks to rising sea levels in the Bay of Bengal. In the north of the country, land is also being lost due to flooding caused by the melting of ice on the Himalayas. The garment industry is responsible for 83% of the country's exports and employs around 4 million workers, making Bangladesh heavily reliant on it. But the world's top consumers of fast fashion are also producing the most greenhouse gases. And the resultant global warming is drastically changing the climate here in Bangladesh. It's been estimated that by 2050, one in seven people in Bangladesh will be displaced by climate change. That's despite Bangladesh producing just a fraction of the CO2 emissions per capita of these countries. Repeated scandals and controversies related to working conditions and environmental pollution in clothing supply chains are leading to a growing realization of the impacts of garment manufacturing. It's news that the public can no longer brush aside. Because of this, brands increasingly like to use the word sustainable. But sustainable fashion can't exist without transparency. In fashion, transparency is the practice of openly sharing information about how, where, and by whom a product was made. That can be checked on websites or apps like fashionchecker.org or the Fashion Transparency Index. Transparency in production supply chains is the first step towards improving working conditions and lessening environmental impacts. But this alone isn't the solution. Concrete statistics on water usage throughout the supply chain is a statistic a lot of brands decline to share, including Patagonia, despite their big push for sustainability. 
Water is one of the world's most precious resources. And the fashion industry is the world's second biggest consumer of water, behind fruit and vegetable farming. It's estimated to use around 1.5 trillion liters annually. Wastewater that has been polluted by toxic chemicals during garment production has been found to have been disposed of in freshwater streams and rivers that people fish and live from. This pair of jeans alone requires 5,000 gallons of water to produce. In April 2021, Levi's released their latest campaign, Buy Better, Wear Longer. On their website, you'll find this page dedicated to sustainability. It also makes statements about the progress Levi's have made in the production of their garments. But as great as their efforts may be here, they don't disclose how much they are currently still using. According to Fashion Checker, Levi's do share basic information about their supply chain, but there is no public evidence about how much water they actually use. And the company scored just 48% in the 2020 Fashion Transparency Index. Full transparency requires a score of 80% or more. None of the 250 brands that were reviewed, which include H&M, Levi's, Patagonia, Nike, and Gucci, scored above this number. Although they don't have an ideal score, Levi's are attempting to disclose more about their supply chains than some other extremely popular fast fashion brands, all of which scored less than 10% on the Fashion Transparency Index. To keep costs low, many fashion brands also use cheap synthetic materials, which can be incredibly damaging to the environment. In 2015, the production of polyester for the use in the textiles industry resulted in more than 706 billion kilograms of CO2 emissions. Polyester is essentially plastic, and fabrics like this now make up around 50% of our clothing. But the damage isn't just limited to production. Hundreds of thousands of fibers can come off of our synthetic clothing in a typical wash. These fibers go into wastewater, which ends up at a sewage treatment facility. As the fibers are so small, many pass through the filtration process and make their way into our rivers and seas. Here, they can be ingested by marine animals, which have catastrophic effects on individual species and the entire ecosystem. Even putting aside these concerns, what we do with our clothing can have a major environmental impact. Right now, more than $500 billion is lost every year due to clothing being underused and a general lack of textile recycling. The number of garments produced annually has doubled since 2000 to now exceed 100 billion. And an estimated 92 million tons of textile waste is created annually by the fashion industry. But what about recycling these clothes? Can't brands recycle old items? And shouldn't we as consumers be more conscious about recycling our old clothes by giving them away to charities? Well, another huge problem is the definition of the word recycling. If you have a look at the fine print, you'll find out that recycling can actually mean shipping off to poorer countries. Sending our clothes off to distant countries is a multi-billion dollar industry for charities and private companies. There is a massive market for secondhand clothing in countries like Poland and Lithuania. It's actually a common misconception that organizations such as Oxfam and the Salvation Army distribute secondhand clothing for free in the developing world. The major charities don't claim to give away old clothing for free. But it isn't readily apparent to donors that the old clothing will be sold to traders who will then retail them. On the whole, you could argue that it does more harm than good. In Africa, the influx of used clothing is ruining local textile industries. And regardless of where the clothing ends up, they create long-term disposable problems. Kristen Bruder, head of Greenpeace's Detox My Fashion campaign, suggested some solutions for the fashion industry back in 2016. She said, our research indicates that the secondhand clothing system is on the brink of collapse. Fashion brands need to urgently rethink the throwaway business model and produce clothing that is durable, repairable, and fit for reuse. As consumers, we also hold the power. Before buying our next bargain item, we can all ask, do I really need this? This takes us back to the Black Friday message we saw from Patagonia. Don't buy this jacket. The root of the problem lies in our excessive consumerism. We are constantly being told by brands, influencers, and the media 
that buying new clothes will make us happy. Maybe it's time to reconsider the foundations of our lifestyle and ask ourselves a few simple questions. One, do I really need this? Two, can I repair my old clothes instead of buying new ones? Three, can I buy secondhand or swap my clothes? Four, do my circumstances allow me to buy better quality from sustainable brands? Outdoor clothing brands are leading this new way of thinking. Patagonia has a worn wear site where you can trade in, repair, or buy used items of the brand's clothing. The strides that sustainable and slow fashion companies are taking are very much needed. But it remains a reality for many people that even if they would like to, they are not in a privileged position where they can afford to pay the high prices of these sustainable products. The cheaper alternatives on our high streets and in our shopping malls are still a more viable option. The most important thing fashion brands can do is to be transparent with their customers and themselves. If they don't know how, where, and by whom their clothes are being made, it's difficult for the relevant stakeholders to work together to fix the problems. Consumers are getting more and more interested in sustainability. Part of the problem is a lot of the wording and terminology used is completely vague and undefined. What does more sustainable mean? What we should be moving towards is away from those kind of vague terms to something much more specific. When consumers are equipped with more, better quality and credible information about the social and environmental impacts of the clothing they buy, they will be able to make a better informed decision. My advice to consumers is ask more questions. Long term, this transparency also builds trust in brands that they buy from. Fashion brands need to make fewer garments, but of higher quality. And starting now, we as consumers need to think twice before we buy. But remember, the most environmentally sustainable item of clothing is the one that you already have in your closet. So thanks, but no thanks, Levi's. I'm gonna stick to the jeans that I already have. Hey, I'm Andy, thank you for watching. We decided to release this video now because September is a big month on the fashion calendar with the New York, London, Milan, and Paris fashion weeks all taking place. And Black Friday is just on the horizon. So we hope this has taught you a little bit more about the environmental impacts of the industry. So please feel free to share this video to drive awareness. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel for new videos every Friday.